How free-to-play friendly is Honkai Star Rail? Let's find out! I cannot tell you how to spend your money. Well, I can, but you don't have to listen. Let me tell you, though, if you- And I won't, because the reality is, dude, I will be free to play if the game is still fun while it's free to play. If the game is not fun while free to play, I'm gonna just say this right now. I'm gonna drop $5,000 so quick, it's ridiculous. Because I sat there and I thought, because I was really gonna be free to play for Honkai Star Rail, and maybe I will, who knows. If the game's not fun, but I can spend money to make it fun, I'm going to spend money, and that's just the reality. If you spend money on this game to beat Forgotten Hall, then you're gonna feel like Mr. Dawei playing a string instrument. Okay. The good feeling only lasts so long. There's like a Why? billion Honkai Star Rail videos on if the game is good for free to play or not, uh -huh. but this is the only one you need. Don't Why listen is that? to anyone else, Trailblazer. I will be the one to guide you amongst the stars and help you make the right decision. Okay, me. do it. Why is this one so important? It's only me. They can't help you. And you wouldn't want to disappoint me, would you? <coughs> That was weird. I've been playing Honkai Star Rail for about two betas now, and between okay. studying the craft and being- I haven't played shit. On all fours for Sila, I can confidently say I've come to a conclusion on how playable this game is for free-to-play players. Uh -huh. And I can confirm that you can play the game. Unless your main console is Xbox, in which case you're kind of First off, the the what, what, you, what, what do you what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Free-to-play units in this game are actually good. And it's easy to say that at the launch of any game. Power creep is real, and I would be it surprised is. if we didn't see power creep on the level of Dragon Ball. <laughs> That is, if this game didn't take after Genshin Impact. So here's the thing. There's actually not really that much power creep in Dragon Ball Z so much as the need to fill, like, a new antagonist role. You know what I mean? Like, let's say there wasn't power creep in Dragon Ball Z, like, or quote-unquote power creep. That means that nobody can get stronger from the beginning. Well, then Goku just kills everyone. But if you've read the manga, you know that Goku gets absolutely bitch-boyed by Moro, like, a thousand times. ...where characters are actively getting weaker. But we'll get to that a little bit later. In Honkai Star rail you get a bunch of characters for free you get the main character which should have all of the elements available to them in about 10 years from now horizontal shao mono without energy problems snarky barbie gotcha gamer primo gems rosaria and serval of all of these units how many do okay. you think are usable for the end game all of if them. your answer was none of them then you're probably used to being let down it's okay, me too. You'll be glad to hear that unlike other Hoyo games, the starting cast is unironically strong, even compared to some of their five-star counterparts. Don Hung deals okay. wind damage, and he's actually great. I'm really hoping that playing Honkai Star Rail doesn't mean that I have to get bombarded with Genshin jokes in a different category. That would be unbearable. Good God, I really hope that that's not the case. For bosses, he's someone you're probably going to invest in, even if you have better options, because at release, there's not a ton of wind options to begin with. March 7th is an amazing support with powerful shields and a freezing utility. Using okay. her is going to allow you to protect your characters that are targeted for heavy hitting attacks, and freezing enemies allows you to dish out more damage without taking it. The right. Trailblazer has decent AoE damage in their physical form, and in their fire form, they're easily a top tier tanking unit that covers your teammates with shields and taunts. And they're hot. Serval is an insane AoE damage dealer, competitive with gacha options. This lady whose name I can't pronounce is a decent- You know what's crazy? Videos like these make me really want to believe, but then they always end up being wrong, and I'm really worried about that. Because the moment one new banner comes out, this whole video can be completely obsolete if they just make a broken unit that wasn't announced or being able to be tested yet. So I will be taking this video as seriously as I can, but dude, I am so pessimistic for gacha games, it's insane. Free quantum character, Asta can break weak weaknesses fairly well with her skill, and she also has buffs including a speed one, which can be extremely helpful. Natasha has powerful heals, cleanse, and a low-cost ult, and Herda has a great personality. All of these characters can be great in great. their own respects, and even though almost all of them have 5-star counterparts, these should be seen as upgrades rather than necessities. Yunqing is just pay to win Donhung, Japard is AoE March 7th, Welt slows enemies down so that he can actually keep up with what they're doing. Come on, old man. Bailu is Chi Chi if you actually used her, Ilya and Berserker have- That does not sound good good at all what what do you bro that that is what do you mean that is the worst thing i've ever heard the, so, so she's the worst character in the whole game the highest aoe damage ceiling in the game bronya is probably the best character in the game and himiko has a great personality and i know and they're all free to play a lot of these can conceptually sound pretty broken, but you're going to be getting some of these characters anyways. Honkai Star Rail is giving a ton of free pulls at launch, and there's a guaranteed 5-star banner that gives you a discounted one 50 Oh, no, they're not? Okay. Pulls in. So if you're broke like me, this is basically a dream come true. Something that a lot of players definitely overrate, though, is the hard pity for characters. Holy Select. shit, what was that? You get to summon God? Where you get to choose a standard character to bring home at 300 pulls on the standard banner. 
The year is 2032. Genshin Impact has just ended its main story, and Honkai Star Rail is only a few years off. You get your last standard warp out of the monthly shop. You've been waiting for this for so long. You've never spent your gacha currency on standard wishes because you're free to play, and so there's no reason to. You want all of the exclusive characters. And finally, despite True. you having seven copies of a character you never wanted to play, you can choose to bring home a character that you never got. Bronya. This is your opportunity to completely change the game forever. You so Bronya is like the best? Select Bronya. You're elated and you can't wait to play. And service is ending. Better luck next time. It's a good feature, but it will take you a long time to get. I honestly wouldn't expect to collect that free character for at least the first two years of playing the game for an average player. Speaking of polls, you're probably wondering, Brax, how many event warps were you able to get in the 92? The answer is 92. This amount varies based on how much you played, Bro, the quests so you did, hot. if you did the events, etc. And oh I'm sure a lot God. of people got more than 92. But I will tell you that because this game is- All right, so 92 polls is so vague. Like, what, what is like, what is the rate for getting a five-star? Because 92 is so vague. You know what I mean? Like, 200 polls in Summer's War gets you a five-star. 90 polls in Genshin gives you a five-star. Same as Genshin. It's the exact same. So it's what, 8% for a four-star, 0.5% for a five-star, but then there's a pity at 90? Isn't like Genshin with absurd amounts of ground to cover, like your real life self, you will be broke. You don't have as many ways to get the premium currency, and without them, you will struggle more in Honkai Star Rail than Genshin to get the five stars you want. Especially since they continued Genshin's pity system, which is an absolute tragedy. That is 90 hard pity and a 50-50 to get the character oh. that you want, with a guarantee if you lose your 50-50. At least we have soft pity at 75, so your odds go up there, and pity okay. carries through banners, kind of like Genshin Impact. In fact, there's a lot like Genshin in this game. The NPCs are the same, the menus and UI look really similar, there's a Spiral Abyss style game mode like Genshin, open world chests, an artifact relic system, resin, wait a second, is this just Genshin Impact? That's wait guys, but it's different, right? It's 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 different, right? It's gotta be different. Cause there's there's no resin, right? There's no resin? Alright, and, and there's gonna be endgame. <laughs> It's actually the main reason I think this game will be free to play friendly though, which sounds insane, I know, but hear me out. Genshin Impact has uh -huh. had a sort of power regression issue for a while. Sure, okay. they've released the occasional busted unit, but many of the newer characters aim specifically to dial back the power of players because to be honest, there's a whole laundry list of free to play accessible units that make the game way too easy. And you have to admit that ever since Inazuma, a lot more characters have had energy issues, lower multipliers, and then there was her. Characters are getting more and more yeah, I think I think Genshin just realized they don't have to make characters good anymore, so why bother? And if they make characters too strong, then people will realize how easy their game is. They're trying to make the characters worse, that way the game seems harder, that way people have to play longer. More niche, not only because Hollyverse wants to create unique designs, but also because they don't want to make a stronger Bennett. Here's my tinfoil hat True. theory. Genshin is a giga casual game. They it want is. casual players, and to be honest, I sometimes think that they regret that they made the game so great for theory crafters. The reason Genshin blew up is because not only did it fill a niche for anime open world and release on mobile while also catering to those waiting for blue protocol but it also is just super easy to play for people that have never played a video game before ever in their life the ways that yeah i mean i think what was it uh two months in i beat the entire spiral abyss blindfolded and it actually pissed people off because they didn't want to acknowledge how easy the game was back then i've never seen more hate comments on a video in my whole life than when i beat the whole spiral abyss blindfolded and i think i even used my feet as well for a playthrough. To keep the game casual is by not introducing things that could be harmful to the casual experience, like meaningful endgame or real cat girls. I was able to beat the endgame of Honkai Star Rail with 6 out of 8 of the characters being the free ones. And while turn-based games are more susceptible to power creep than other types of True, gotchas, I think that Honkai Star Rail will try to keep the new units from power creeping old and free-to-play accessible units. Because by showing that they want to pull in Genshin's audience with all of their Genshin gameplay elements, they're showing that they want a casual audience. They want that same success that Genshin had, which means they could very much follow Genshin's power regression formula. But I really don't know what you do with the game that's casual turn based strategy with no pvp like what do you do then i, I guess we'll find out or even just power stagnation formula once players start to understand how broken tingyun is what what the fuck? I mean, they already kind of started. They nerfed Sila multiple times in beta, and she's still broken. Believe it or not, Hoyaverse's public opinion does matter to them, and they do want to look like the good guys amongst a sea of gacha games, even when all gacha is predatory. So that's why I feel- 
I, I'm glad somebody said that because that's like something that you're like not allowed to say. I mean, people need to understand that like Genshin Impact, Honkai Impact, this Honkai Star Wars is a predatory game. These are games that are designed to make as much money from the players as possible, you know, as possible. I feel like even when they release a bunch of new units, they won't be significantly more powerful than other units. Sure, there will be outliers, but I think it's unlikely that this game's going to power creep in the same way that everyone's predicting. Basically, you won't get a ton of event pulls compared to Genshin Impact, but the standard five-star are really good. So when you lose 100% of your 50-50s, you're still getting a lot out of them. Uh, I want to make thing one one thing perfectly like clear. Like this video is being spoken in a very like if so facto way, but I just want to make sure that you know, I don't know anything. This guy doesn't know anything. Everything that's being said is a hypothesis and that is like it. There could very well be power creep. There could very well. There is no confirming or denying that fact. And the four star starting units are also amazing too. I also just want to add that they give you four star and five star light cone weapon options as a free to play too. So that's not something that you have to worry about either. Personally, I think that you should stay free to play or low spender mode on Honkai Star Rail. I 1 billion percent agree, unless the game becomes more fun if you spend money. And then in which case I will spend more money. But I am going to try real hard to stay free to play but but the problem is here's here's the big problem guys here's the here's the huge problem i mean like massive problem if if they artificially create a gate to where i am not allowed to progress unless i grind for three weeks i'm gonna spend five dollars and i'm gonna skip it like i am just going to spend five dollars well because with game knowledge Although I could do the Giga Brain strat of just not playing and then I never lose any money, but I'm bored and I might as well. You can clear most of the content with the starting characters, at least as of the closed beta test. I could be wrong, but that's my experience. So get excited if you're going to be free to play on Honkai Star Rail. Our brand new favorite space game is just around the corner, but honestly, the only space you should be worried about right now is the space on your hard drive. Yikes. <laughs> It's only 17 gigs, bro. I have I have a five terabyte uh, hard drive or uh, memory. Dude, good vid, man. Good vid, Braxophone. That was a great video. What did the comments say? How how was how was the reaction to this? Video star rails daily routine looks like okay. It's not a matter of are the starting characters strong enough for end game. It's a matter of are you strong enough to get to end game without pulling your wallet up every single banner. That's a good point. That's a very good point. It feels like too feels like a week's too long of a wait. I want to play the game so damn badly. No, I feel like I'm good with this. And the reason why I didn't play the beta is because I intentionally chose not to, because I don't want to ruin any of the fun for these games. Like I don't want to figure out what the quote unquote like meta truly is with my own testing. I'd rather see what other people say and then see if they're wrong, because that's way more fun for me. I mean the comments look pretty good, man. Looks pretty good. Hey, good vid, Braxphone. Make sure to go check out his channel, guys. That was sick.